to do next is pancakes. Now I do this because every time I make this recipe, people go wild over it. It tastes like oatmeal cookies and it's pancakes and it's also made from soaked whole grains and lots of whole foods. So I'm sure you're going to love this because this is one of the favorites of my audiences. We're going to start out with um, rolled oats. Now remember I told you when you're, when you're using whole grains it's so important to use soaked whole grains. So I took rolled oats and some whole spelt flour and I soaked them overnight in water with a little bit of vinegar. Now when you're soaking your, when you're soaking your grains, if you put a little bit of acid into the soak water, like, like um, raw vinegar or lemon juice, it helps to dissolve the phytic acid and all the enzyme inhibitors. And it also helps to bring out the nutrients of the grain. So this is rolled oats and spelt flour that have been soaked overnight in water and a tablespoon of vinegar. Yeah, so you've got two cups of rolled oats and a half a cup of um, spelt flour and uh, two cups of water and a tablespoon of vinegar. I've been perusing different websites of healthy recipes just to see what else is out there and I'm really disappointed like I have not found a site yet that doesn't tell you that you have to put in white flour with your whole grain products. So if they're making whole wheat bread they use half whole grain and half white flour. If they're making pancakes they use half whole grain and half white flour and the myth out there is that if you're gonna get the right texture and the right flavor you have to add in refined white flour and it's just not true. All of my recipes are made out of 100% whole grain, no white flour, no processed flour. It's all soaked and whole. And um, please don't believe the myth that you have to add in white flour to make your stuff taste good because this is really easy to um, to use whole grains. Yes? When you're soaking this, so you're not draining it and doing anything else. Nope, it's just the base for your, base for your batter. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're just soaking grains, like let's say you're making... Um, something else where you don't want it to be a batter, then you can soak it, dump off the water, rinse it, and then use the grains if you don't want to make a batter. But if you're making a batter, you can just leave it in there. Okay, um, so next we're just going to put in a little bit of... Oops, sorry. Um, we're going to put in a little bit of honey. Now, the trick to honey with pancakes is if you put in too much honey, they're going to get really, the more, the more sugar that's in there, sugar burns really easily. Sugar in the broad sense of sweet things um, burns super easily. So if you put in too much honey or sweetener, your pancakes are going to get really dark and they're going to burn. So make sure that you don't put in too much honey, just enough to make it sweet. Um, that is two tablespoons of honey and a quarter cup of oil. Now, um, when you're choosing an oil, when you're cooking with an oil, a lot of people advocate for using olive oil for everything. The problem with olive oil is it has a very, if you're using the extra virgin uh, cold pressed olive oil, like is, the, is what's going to be the best for you, it has a very low smoking point. So whenever you're using oils, um, be aware of their smoking point. Once an oil starts to smoke, it changes the molecular structure of the oil and it becomes carcinogenic which means it starts to cause cancer so um, make sure that when you're using an oil and you're cooking with an oil it's got to be a, an oil that you can use at high temperatures without it reaching its smoking point or else even if you choose a healthy oil it's going to be unhealthy by the time you heat it up so olive oil um, you need it cold pressed and uh, non processed but also you just you can't heat it up it's you can warm it but you can't heat it don't cook with olive oil so good options for cooking oils is coconut oil um, make sure that's also you know uh, raw and cold pressed but with coconut oil because it's a saturated it's a saturated fat and it's a medium chain triglyceride it's got a high it's got a very high smoking point so if you want to you know fry something or saute something or cook coconut oil is a really good option for that because you can raise it to high temperatures the other thing what I'm using right now is grapeseed oil and you have to read the bottle but um, generally grapeseed oil is also processed uh, minimally processed uh, but it also has a high smoking point, so you can use it for cooking. Um, use uh, walnut oils, almond oil, nut oils, olive oil. Only use those for salad dressings and things that you're not going to cook. Um, all right, and then for our spices, we've got some cinnamon. I've got like a, a tablespoon of cinnamon. 
a teaspoon of baking powder, teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Yes? I have a question. Do you use real salt or are you using... I use real salt with everything. So I use two different kinds of salt, either Celtic sea salt, which is kind of a gray salt, or real salt, which is pink. The thing when you're choosing a salt is it needs to be minimally processed and it also needs to have color to it. So if it's just a plain white salt, all the minerals and all the healthy stuff has been processed out of it. So find a salt that's colored some way. Okay. Okay, so what they're passing out for samples right now um, is the Nutty Krispies and almond milk. Now, um, online I have a cooking show that teaches you how to make this almond milk, which is why I didn't make it for the class today. I just wanted you to taste it because it's so delicious. You're going to love it. If you get on YouTube and look up Cafe Janae, that's my channel, um, I've got 10 cooking shows up that teach you how to make different things, and one of them is the almond milk. So. We've got a little nutty crispy there and some almond milk to try. I find that if I just let people taste my stuff, they fall in love with it. And then they want to start then they want to start eating healthy. And the comment I've got, most of all is if food tastes this good why should we eat any other way and so I'm gonna make that my motto you know with food this good why eat any other way and remember that for the holidays because you can make food that tastes just as good as your regular Thanksgiving food or even better and uh, and it's gonna be way healthier for you so all you do is spoon this onto the griddle here just like regular pancakes and what happens is it turns into a yummy cookie-like concoction. Now one of the problems with breakfast that we discussed a little bit earlier, what stops people from eating breakfast? They're in a hurry, they don't have time to cook, they don't have time to, you know, make something, they don't have time to sit down and eat, and the beautiful things about um, these pancakes is that you can make them ahead of time, make several batches. I find that it takes just as long to make three or four batches as it takes to make one, generally speaking. And I make a whole bunch of these pancakes and then I freeze them and then when I'm ready for a quick breakfast you just put them in the toaster or in the toaster oven and you've got a meal in less than two minutes.